We were really, really lucky with the, with the cast that we got. When I saw the performances between Roxy, who was magnificent, Steve, who was fantastic, and Iris, I couldn't have been happier. Steve brought this, 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 this almost paternal instinct to, to care for Hermes, but at the same time realising that she had to toe the line. Tomorrow, there'll be a fucking overseer here demanding to know why you are ad living all over the end of his broadcast. When I initially wrote this, um, I had Hermes as, as, as a male character and, and Iris as a female character, and the idea was that you know, this, this voice of freedom was kind of alluring and almost seductive. Hello. We need your help, Hermes. But then I met Roxy and I was like, wow, no, you, I think you get Hermes more. He sent me the script and, uh, and I read it and I thought it was brilliant. And, uh, and yeah, and I said, great, let's do it. In those close-ups where she's on the floor and she's, she's completely bereft, like I couldn't have asked for a better performance at that point. You know, I think it was brilliant that Hermes was this young woman. She's the one that, you know, can make this massive act of defiance. And there was something really appealing about getting to play sort of a, a flawed hero. We'd worked with Michael Rouse before on uh, Between Lambs and Lions, where he played a journalist called Balthazar. This guy did such a good job for us on Between Lambs and Lions. Why not get him back to play Iris? He delivered it with such intensity. It's because they don't want you to. There's so much that they don't want you to know about. We obviously wanted to play with this idea that is he real, is he not real? They control you. We don't know if Iris is on the other end of a line or whether she's making it up because she needs to create this character because the miserableness of her existence has just become too much. But you've been drinking when this Iris showed up. A little, but... It's all in your head. The ghost-like movements of Iris, you know, just, just sells the idea that, is he real? Is he not real? Is he in, in Hermes' imagination? It was great to have Murph on to play Overseer Things, and he is, he is the ultimate symbol of state authority. Like, you can't help but be a bit like, oh, you know, this, this, this guy isn't messing around. Revolution. Revolution.